Welcome to Wednesday News Day, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. Okay, to be honest, this week's News Day video is probably one of the most action-packed, cool episodes that we've had in a while. A lot of awesome stuff has happened this past week. Tons of new quest information, Microsoft is creating a metaverse, Valve and OpenXR, that and so much more. Let's just get right into the news. <laughs> but actually, just real quick, I want to say a quick thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, everyone that likes and comments on these videos, or even just watches them, and everyone that's joined in the awesome community that is the Thrill Seeker Discord. You all make this channel and this whole thing possible, and without you, I couldn't do it. You all are VR and AR pioneers, and I couldn't ask for a better family to be pioneering the future with. So this week, Tuesday-ish Newsday is brought to you by you. Thank you. But for real this time, let's actually get right into the news. One of the coolest parts of VR is seeing how the community reacts to a new game or hardware launches. <laughs> it's very much so a different feel than the traditional PC gamer or console gamer community, and that makes a lot of sense. So much of what makes VR special are the social interactions that VR provides that other mediums are just incapable of providing. And a great example of that is a game that recently released and has absolutely blown up, and you might already know what it is, it's Gorilla Tag. It's a completely free, early access VR game that is incredibly simple. You are a gorilla. Actually, everyone is a gorilla, and you're in a treehouse-like environment, and you play tag. The graphics aren't anything special, there's no crazy storyline, yet the game has amassed 42,000 players within its first two weeks, which is really great for a VR game that's only available on Steam. I'll also mention Gorilla Tag is made by one dude. That's it. Pretty impressive. The whole point of the game is just to socialize, climb trees, and both run away and run at people while playing tag. Catch is, you can only use your arms for locomotion, which makes for an interesting skill curve if you've ever played. Either way, you should definitely try it. I thought the game wasn't for me, then I spent three hours straight in a room with random gorillas just playing tag, so maybe it's for you too. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I talked about the first time a 120Hz mode was hinted at for the Oculus Quest 2. Well, since then, it's actually been completely confirmed. It's happening. The Quest 2 is getting 120 hertz, and that's kind of crazy considering the headset launched with a 72 hertz standard refresh rate with Experimental 90. Thing is, it's not going to be for all games or applications at all, but the first time we get to actually use 120 hertz may be really soon. According to a tip developer roadmap, next month in fact. At first, 120 hertz will be an opt-in only beta feature, and eventually it'll be a toggle for developers to turn on if they're able to regarding performance. Honestly, I don't know how Facebook is squeezing more and more out of this headset. It's kind of crazy, and say what you want about literally everything else Facebook does, but they're actually making a really decent VR headset here, and at this point, if it does actually get full 120Hz PC functionality, it's dangerously encroaching on the Valve Index territory of feature set. Oculus just keeps making the Quest platform better and better, and it surprises me every single time it happens. PSVR 2, or Valve's next headset, or literally any competition, couldn't come any faster, because honestly, the scarier part here isn't that Facebook is winning this VR race, it's that they're winning the VR race and they're not letting off the throttle, they're just increasing the lead by as much as possible. And it's working, 1000%. Just this morning, it's been announced that the most popular headset on Steam VR is the Oculus Quest 2. The Rift S had its glory moment, but uh, it's over now. The Quest 2 is the most widely adopted PC VR headset so far, and it's kind of technically not even a PC VR headset, not to mention it's the most widely adopted standalone headset. So kind of big news, the Quest 2 is the reigning king in terms of numbers right now, and that's not gonna stop anytime soon. But there's even more information regarding the Quest 2 before we start talking about this Microsoft Metaverse thing. And this one's a little odd to be honest. So I can imagine most of you, if you've used a Quest or Quest 2, have either heard of or used the virtual desktop application through SideQuest and played PC VR games wirelessly through streaming. Now previously, if you did this, you had to update the app through SideQuest to use that feature, but now it's actually on the official app. 
You don't have to do anything extra or sideload any application or make a developer account. You just have to download Virtual Desktop from the Quest Store, have the PC streamer app on the PC, and it works. Facebook had previously made Guy Godin, developer of Virtual Desktop, remove the streaming feature, which is why you had to patch it. But like I said, Oculus has now officially approved the feature and application, meaning PC VR streaming on the Quest and Quest 2 is even easier than it was before and is in a way officially sanctioned and kind of supported. And that's really awesome. But I do have one question. Come on, Gaben and Valve. You said wireless was a solved problem with the Index and VR, yet the Quest 2 is getting 120 hertz and better PC VR streaming support? Yikes. No wonder you're losing market share at an alarming rate, Valve. Come on. The Quest 2 is receiving update after update after update, yet the Valve Index is about to hit its second birthday with no sign of wireless anywhere. And actually, one more thing regarding the Quest just really fast. Remember I mentioned the Quest 3 a few weeks ago as Mark Zuckerberg confirmed they are working on a new headset right now? Well, we have some more information on that, and it seems that Facebook's next headset may be something more like a Quest Pro. In an AMA with Boz, vice president of Facebook Reality Labs, someone asked, Quest Pro, huh? And Boz replied saying, interesting and winked at the camera. That is literally all we have to go on. That's it. So, Quest Pro may happen, we'll see, but I wouldn't put too much of your thoughts into a wink just yet. But now, it's time for a meme break! So, remember the talk about PlayStation VR last week? Well, a new patent from Sony regarding VR tech is pretty bananas. Literally. As this article says, forget PlayStation, we want a plantain station. <laughs> this whole patent is about using random objects as controllers via cameras and hand tracking, basically. And the patent example is a banana, as you can see. Being used as a controller with virtual buttons and everything. <laughs> Other examples in the patent are using two oranges to control a tank or to be used as a steering wheel? Pretty interesting. I, I should say that the there's no saying if these patents will actually be fruitful or not for the controller industry, or if this patent will just turn into a bad apple. But I do gotta say, with all of these crazy cool patents for Sony and their new VR system, and no actually confirmed information, it can make a man go crazy. <laughs> okay, uh, that one wasn't so great. Let's just get right back to the news. Imagine you're walking home from school with your AR glasses on. You see a Charmander on the side of the road because, well, augmented reality and Pokemon Pokemon Go, and this is the hypothetical future, but you already have a few Charmanders, but you know a friend that's wanted one for a while. You phone them up, and they just appear right next to you as a hologram within your AR glasses, and you end up chilling for the rest of the day together, but not really, catching Pokemon in Pokemon Go. This example right here is kind of what Microsoft is working on right now. And Niantic, the developers of Pokemon Go, have sort of done or are working on this exact same thing. Just just don't get too excited, this Pokemon Go example is not for consumers at all right now. But back on topic, I think by now we all know that Microsoft has had its hands in AR, VR, MR, and XR for a long time now. Whether with their own projects like the HoloLens and Windows Mixed Reality, or by supporting slash acquiring a bunch of specialized AR or VR companies. But one of the most exciting projects I've ever seen for the entire XR space and industry has just gotten a ton of new details, and I think once you get the basic grasp of how this sort of thing works, you'll be just as excited as I am. I'll try to explain it basically, Microsoft is building a system to connect and create the metaverse in a way, independent of what sort of device you're using, called Microsoft Mesh. The idea of Mesh is far bigger than just a system to play games together though. It's meant to provide a true virtual collaboration system that works across all sorts of software and hardware. But there's a key phrase here, and its persistent metaverse. And what that very roughly means for this is having an identity, whatever you choose it to be, or other characteristics be consistent across all of Mesh and the affected devices. The main goal is to be able to hop in any application or game seamlessly with any hardware and carry the same avatar, name, and everything to be able to cross between any game or application with anyone using any hardware. That seems like a very open explanation and it might make no sense, but trust me, it does kind of make sense. Here's a quick example 
example from the original article that I think will make it a little easier to understand. Say you're in alt space with a buddy talking about whatever. You want to show them a new piece of art that you made in Tilt Brush, an open source VR art application. So you use mesh and transport together, using the same avatars and identities you had in alt space into Tilt Brush, and you can even draw together if you want to. Then that friend wants to show your art to another person, but that person only has an AR headset. No problem. That person accepts the invite on their AR headset, and you, your friend, and your virtual painting gets projected into their room via the power of augmented reality, while you see their presence in real time via their avatar in VR. The goal here is an ecosystem that works together for all of XR, behind a Microsoft account, of course. I will say though, this example I gave is not a real example right now. Could it be real? Sure, someone just has to do it. But the bigger point is that Mesh is a really awesome idea, and it's hard to pinpoint just how much about VR that it really could change. There is a lot more to it, and I'll definitely talk about it way more in the future as it gets fleshed out, but these are just the early days of the project. So I have talked quite a few times about OpenXR on this channel. Basically, it's an API backed by pretty much the entire industry, and it makes creating games and applications across any VR or XR device super easy. It's a standard that pretty much all apps adhere to to make sure they can work together and on any headset as well as any hardware. The big news here is that the latest update of Steam VR version 1.16 now has completely full support for OpenXR 1.0. And another cool thing is that Valve says version 1.16 quote passes all OpenXR 1.0 conformance tests on Windows for Vulkan, OpenGL, D3D11, and D3D12. End quote. This might seem weird to some as to why this is a big deal, but Oculus does in fact support OpenXR and OpenXR apps right now on their store. What they don't do is allow any game on their store that even mentions Steam VR in the code. This creates way more pain and hassle for developers as they have to make different builds with different APIs, and it's just a pain for everyone, developers, consumers, and platform holders. But theoretically, a Steam VR build of a game and an Oculus Store build of a game could be pretty much identical with OpenXR and be more predictably stable on both platforms as well due to OpenXR. Thing is, that's actually a really small example of how huge this API actually is for the industry, but I think you're starting to see the picture between Microsoft Mesh and OpenXR and things working together, and everything just starts to make a little more sense. But now it's time for question of the week from Brendan Pearson. Is there anything non-VR you're oddly passionate about? You do seem to prefer your coffee non-percolated. And true, I like my coffee usually poured over or out of a French press, but my biggest hobbies outside of VR is I'm a wannabe filmmaker that's just slowly working on my trade trying to get better, but my biggest hobby is definitely motorcycles. I love motorbikes and I'm addicted to them and I love riding. It's just a thrilling experience and a big part of my life. And that's question of the week. Don't forget to leave your own below and stop by my stream today. It's always a good time. And don't forget about the Discord server as well. We have meetups and giveaways all the time in it, so come on in. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Lucid VR, Mud King, Caution Ramen, I'm Naku, Zale, Burtrap, Atomaly, CPCJ79, KR, That Brock Guy, Token Engineer, HCG Randon, Benji, Biz, Fusion Oak, Very Evil Shadow, and a new one, Gran. I couldn't do any of this without you. So don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, relax.